why is it so hard to explain books that you gave five stars? Like, you could definitely talk about a book you gave one star for like 50 minutes, but let somebody ask about a book you gave five stars and you're like, oh my god, crickets, crickets. What's up, Cresties? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the last and final piece to my wrap-ups for the first half of 2020. Two, three. While I was doing these wrap-ups, I completely forgot that July and August were a thing, and I haven't done wrap-ups for July and August, but I really, really liked the way I did this series for my first half of 2020, so I think I'm going to do the same thing for the second half as well, and then maybe around November slash early December, I'll roll out the same type of series that I did for January through June. So yes, just wanted to preface that because I don't think it's possible for me to keep up with wrap ups every single month because I have school, I am a grad student, it is suffering season out here. But today to give myself some serotonin, I wanted to film my five star ratings books. I'm actually really, really excited about this. And I feel like for a lot of these books, you guys will not be surprised at all because of the way I constantly talk about these books. But before we get into that, I'm going to let future Chanel take over and tell you guys about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Book of the Month. Book of the Month is an online monthly book service with a mission to promote new and emerging authors. Every month, Book of the Month aims to curate diverse new and early release book selections in various different genres. While Book of the Month is a monthly subscription, they do allow you to skip months if you do not find any titles that interest you at any given month. In this video, I'm going to talk about the five choices for September. The first book we have for September is Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, which is a non-fiction exploration of how the America we know today has been shaped by a hidden cast system beyond race, class, and other factors that we are used to hearing about. The next book is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, which is a comedy about a crime that never took place, a would-be bank robber who disappears into thin air, and eight extremely anxious people who find out that they have more in common than they would ever have thought. Next, we have Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse, which is a moving portrait of a family of Ghanaian immigrants ravaged by depression, addiction, and grief. And this book focuses on themes like faith, science, religion, and love. Next, we have Winter Counts by David Heska Wanbli Waden which is an own voices indigenous thriller. When justice is denied by the American legal system or the council, our main character Virgil finds himself in charge of a dangerous mission to track down the source of a heroin influx in his community. The author of this book is Lakota, and the book is set in South Dakota. Lastly, we have The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Julian Kim, which centers around an unconventional mother-daughter relationship. When Margot finds out that her mother suspiciously died, she begins digging into her mother's past as a Korean War orphan and an undocumented immigrant, only to find out that she may not know her mother at all. These are all the book options for September choices. If you're interested in any of them, don't forget to use my code for your first book for $9.99. Now that we have talked about that, let's go ahead and talk about the chef's kiss, absolute perfection of books that I read in the first half of 2020. The first book we're going to talk about is P.S. I Still Love You, which follows Lara Jean Sun Covey, my home girl. If you guys remember me talking about the first book in my four star ratings, which I posted before this, this series follows a main character, Lara Jean Sun Covey, who writes these love letters to boys that she has a crush on as a way to relieve herself of these heart-wrenching, painful feelings. But then one day all of her letters get mailed out and one of the people who gets one of her letters is Peter Kavinsky, who is the most popular guy at her school. So that's kind of like the first book. And in the second book, we get our amazing, flavorful, talented king john ambrose mclaren with a note on the back oh this seems personal i feel a little funny reading this want to read this instead listen when i read the first book i definitely loved peter's character a lot but in the second book there was just something about the addition of john ambrose mclaren and i think i have done a few videos on this and i will like put them somewhere up here so you guys can check those out 
But John Ambrose McLaren's character was just so well done. He was sweet. He was kind. He was patient. He was loyal. The friendship that bloomed between him and Lara Jean during the book was just so beautiful. And this is definitely one of my biggest critiques about the movie was that we didn't get to see their friendship or their romance blossom at all the way we did in the book. And so that's why I'm like very, very convinced that a lot of people remain Peter stands after watching the second movie, but that's another story for another day. But in the book, we get to know John Ambrose McLaren so well. His character was just very, very likable. And my favorite part about this book and why I ended up giving it five stars was because of the game challenge. Because we really got to see Lara Jean's character a lot more as she made different friendships, as she got closer to John Ambrose McLaren, as she built that bond with him and also I, I forgot her name was a Jen you're so predictable Lara Jean it's quite adorable Jen Jen was like the antagonist in this book as she was in the last book as well kind of but I also kind of liked Jen's character because we also got to see a lot more about Jen and her family a lot of like her family issues and even though I was very unhappy with the way Peter treated Lara Jean throughout the entire book I found it very interesting because in the first book, he definitely gave up that like perfect YA romance type vibe. But then in the second book, we got to see the way that Peter acts when he's backed into a corner and things like that. I definitely was a massive John Ambrose McLaren stan in the second book, but we'll see what happens in the third one. But yes, this book was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it so much. It deserves all the five stars that it got. Again, like the first book, I wanted to bake so badly while reading this, but I didn't want to burn my house down. So I definitely kept the baking to my mind. The next book on my list is Heartstopper Volume 1. I read this, honestly, a while ago. And I remember really loving it at the time. This follows our main characters, Nick and Charlie, who are both students at an all boys grammar school. And they meet through rugby. I think one of the characters ends up signing up for the rugby team and then they meet become friends and then like fall in love all of that i know it's a whole entire series i think there might be like three volumes out right now but i just remember it having really cute soft feelings it went by really really quickly and upon reading the second volume i will definitely be rereading the first i just know that when i read this i had nostalgic vibes about high school. I had cute soft feelings about romance. I really loved both characters and their awkward cute romance. It was just a fun time. So if you're looking for a really fun cutesy graphic novel to get you maybe out of a reading slump or to give you some kind of lovely soft feeling, definitely read this. Or if you just want to read a book about people falling in love and then feel jealous and alone, also read it. But yes. I completely forgot that the entire time I was filming this, I was supposed to be putting on my face mask. So I'm going to be doing that now as I talk about the next book. Um, as you've noticed, your girl's not wearing any makeup. And that's definitely, that's definitely due to the fact that I have been stress breaking out. I need to make sure that this is going on properly. But let me talk about the next book while I'm doing this. So the next book is Radio Silence. This one will be very, very easy for me to talk about. This book follows our main character, Frances, who is head girl at her school. And she's just used to, you know, getting perfect grades, being the perfect student. But she, in her free time, loves to draw and make fan art about her favorite podcast, Universe City. Universe City, oh my goodness. I have no words. I truly have no words for University, for Radio Silence, for Alid, for Francis. I don't even know how to talk about this book. I'm already getting off track. Anyways, so like I said, Francis really loves to draw and loves to make fan art about her favorite podcast. So one day she gets a DM on Twitter from the podcast creator asking her to make fan art for the podcast or to be an artist for the podcast. And she accepts. And that acceptance ends up spiraling into a very, very unexpected friendship between Frances and Alid and a few of her other classmates. 
that's the best way I can explain this book. I read it for the first time in January and then read it for the second time in August. But yes, I first read this book in January. And when I say I sped through it, I really mean that. Like, I sped through that book. I couldn't even annotate or anything. And at the time, that it had been like a really long while since I had read a book so quickly and so immersely and I just found myself crying so much while reading Radio Silence. It was just so touching the way Alan experiences anxiety and depression and just him, just him as a character was honestly so relatable for me and I just, it was a moment, it was a time, it was a very painful time reading this book but it was also a very magical time and if I try to explain more about Radio Silence, I will just fail very, very badly. So if you want to know more about my thoughts, <laughs> just read the book. Read the book and feel my pain. That's all I can say. The next book on my list is The Worst Best Man, which is absolutely chef's kiss delicious amazing wonderful this book follows our main character who is a wedding planner but unfortunately on the day of her wedding she gets abandoned at the altar and she then has to process and heal for the short moment that we're given at the beginning of the book but then we fast forward three years to the point of where she is trying to get a contract, I believe, a wedding planner contract or something with the company, but it turns out that the guy who left her at the altar and his brother are her rivals for the contract, and she and her ex-fiance's brother end up partnering against him because they both want to get the contract, they end up working together. That's all I can say because I don't want to give spoilers on what exactly happened that made them work together, but they end up working together. And of course, because it's a romance book, <laughs> they go through romantic stuff like falling in love and all of that. I really, really love this book because our main character was just so charismatic. She was so funny. She was so talented. She was so confident in the things she wanted and the things that she was doing, even though she definitely went through a lot and hearing about the pain she went through, you know, being left at the altar, feeling like she wasn't worthy or worth love. The characters in this book were just so well done. The romance was good. I felt like the characters did communicate very, very well in comparison to a lot of other romance books that I have read. Read. and the book is extremely diverse. I believe the author is black and so is the main character and it's just chef's kiss. You need to read it. Absolutely this needs to be a romance book on your list especially if you're someone who has enjoyed romance books like Get a Life Chloe Brown, The Kiss Quotient, things like that. You will love this one as well. Why is it so hard to explain books that you gave five stars? Like you could definitely talk about a book you gave one star for like 50 minutes but let somebody ask about a book you gave five stars and you're like oh my god crickets crickets. Anyways the next book on this list is How to Hack a Heartbreaker. This follows our main character Mel who is a receptionist at a company that rents out spaces to app developers. So because Mel works at this company and because she has a lot of interactions with men who are sexist, misogynistic, etc, etc, she decides that she has had enough of these men and had enough of her very bad dating experiences. So she creates a blog slash app called Jerk Alert, which basically informs women and people who date men about men who are trash and their trash experiences they basically just go there to confess and to be like oh my god i had an experience with this guy this guy has anybody else met this guy and of course as you can imagine that ends up being a massive disaster and it ends up being a wild experience for Mel and she essentially gets into a lot of trouble for it and she's just basically trying to figure out how to keep herself anonymous, how to protect Jerk Alert, and how to not get into 
any dangerous situations. I really, really enjoyed this book because I loved the discussions on women in the tech world and how women in the tech world are viewed and seen and treated. And our main character was very charismatic. The love interest was also charismatic. I had a little bit of issues with him, but I did like their relationship overall. I thought it was a very good, solid romance book. If you are somebody who works in the tech world or lives in any area where tech is a booming big part of your daily activity. For example, if you live in Silicon Valley, this might be something you relate to and understand based on living in such an area. That's why I really, really enjoyed it. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, I feel you. Literally, literally love, I feel you. The next book on my list, which is, while I don't even know how many times I have talked about this book before, but this book is Becoming by Michelle Obama. This is Michelle Obama's memoir and it follows her life from childhood up until after the presidency and how she kind of went through life as the one black woman in many, many spaces, how she went through school, how she, you know, handled being the first lady of this country, how she handled being a mother, how she handled being a wife, how she handled being a student, how she handled her individuality, even in all of those situations. This book was just absolutely phenomenal. Girl, you have done it again, constantly raising the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly. I really, really felt seen by Michelle Obama as a dark-skinned black woman myself. I felt like a lot of the think pieces and a lot of the advice that Michelle gave in this book really hit home for me. And I just really, it's hard to explain a memoir, I feel like, because you find pieces of yourself in the book and you feel like, okay, I see myself here, I see myself there. But I feel like with a lot of nonfiction, it's super difficult to kind of like give it a review or give it a rating. And I'm still trying to figure out my rating system with nonfiction and with memoirs especially. But fortunately, all the memoirs that I've read this year were all five out of five star reads. So we will worry about that when the time comes. But yes, Becoming, I've talked about this book literally to death now. And all I gotta say is it's amazing and you should read it. The next book I have is Slay, which follows our main character, Kiera, who on the secret is a game developer of a wonderful game called Slay, which has incorporates, prioritizes black game players, black language, black culture, different things about the black experience. I loved this book so much and this is going to be really really random but the mention of Fufu really hit me really I was like oh my god I feel seen because it's very rare that I read books that talk about Nigerian food and that just throw Nigerian words and terminology around and reading that really I'm not even gonna lie reading that definitely bumped this book massively up the rankings for me. This book is just so well written. Kiera's character is just so lovely. One thing I didn't expect in this book was having different viewpoints, like different POVs. I thought we were just gonna get Kiera, but we got so many different characters. I believe we got like a trans character. We got a character who lived in Europe. That's also another thing we don't tend to get in a lot of books. But in this book, it was really, really nice to see different characters living in different spaces, living in different worlds. And I just really, really loved the friendships that Kiera created between the people in the game and the way that she dealt with her secret. This book also deals very heavily with anti-blackness because in the game there is an antagonizer who is constantly bullying other creators in the game who's constantly threatening Kiera with her secret and threatening to expose the secret of the game because I believe in the book there was a character who ends up getting killed because of game points and that is a big plot point in the book and so this character who is antagonizing 
Kara and other characters that's constantly bringing that up and being like, well, why do only Black people get to use these words? Why do only Black people get to play this game? This is reverse racism, things like that. Such topics were really brought up in the book and I really, really appreciated that and I really liked that the discussions happened. I'm not going to give a spoiler away, but finding out who the antagonizer was, who the bully was, definitely made me gasp. I definitely gasped. I was like, ooh, because I didn't see coming at all. So there's a little bit of a sprinkle of mystery in there if you like that kind of thing. But this book just has so many different sides to it that it's just, there's just so many different sides to this book. And the way it's so diverse was amazing and I just really, really loved it. I think this book is phenomenal and it's definitely something that everybody needs to read, specifically if you're a Black, if you're a gamer, this is one that you should definitely pick up. So the next book on my list is actually a series called Saga, which follows our two main characters, who are on opposite sides of a war. They end up falling in love and having a child and they are now fugitives being hunted and they have to go from planet to planet trying to keep themselves alive as well as keep their baby alive. I really, really love this series. I think I've read like the first six volumes and I really love the discussions on racism and other topics that happen in the story that I don't want to give away but I really love how the authors kind of go between very very serious topics to very very fun topics. This is definitely an adult series. I would not recommend this for somebody who likes more of a YA vibe because there's a lot of explicit scenes and language in the series and there's of course a lot of violence but I really, really enjoy this series because I just think it does such a nice job of discussing so many things that a lot of series don't discuss or discussing so many things that you wouldn't expect from like a fantasy slash sci-fi comic series. It's definitely one of my favorites up there and I just really love the art style as well as the discussions that happen. And also the story is told from the child's perspective. So she's kind of going along, leading us through her childhood, through her parents' eyes, through her eyes, and we get to really see things from a child's perspective, and I really, really like that because it was unexpected and just a really nice touch to the story. The next book on my list is An Ember in the Ashes, which follows our two main characters, Laia, who is a slave, and Elias, who is a soldier. One day, Laia's brother gets arrested for treason, and she decides to join a rebel group in order to infiltrate the prestigious military academy where Elias is a student and that's how the two of them meet. This book was just so phenomenal and both main characters were just so wonderfully done. I found the story to be so touching because the entire time I was reading it I was very very invested in Laia and Elias's characters. There's just something about this book that is just so impactful. I was extremely impressed with the writing style of this story and both characters and how they both struggled so hard with who they were because Laia the entire time was struggling with her parents' legacy and struggling with the idea that she is the weak one in her family and she's unable to keep the people she loves safe while Elias was struggling with the fact that he didn't want to be a soldier anymore but he didn't know how to get out of the situation because his entire family and his family ties are in this military system if that makes sense but I just really really loved seeing them suffer if that like I'm trying to make it sound better but their suffering was definitely something that felt so deep like it's hard to explain but if you read this book and or if you've read this book then you know what I'm talking about because the suffering that both characters go through just feels so real and it just hits you right in the heart like it hits you in the soul and that's exactly how I felt when reading this I was extremely shook and the ending mind blown. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This book follows our main character Charlie who is writing letters to a friend. Charlie is talking about high school and he's talking about his experience in high school. Dear friend, I haven't really talked to anyone outside of my family all summer but tomorrow is my first day and and he's talking about two wonderful friends that he meets, Sam and Patrick. So this book, how do I explain it? It's a very, very thin book. It's very short. It's very tiny. It's very eeny, meeny, meeny. And um, regardless of that, it will crush you. 
this book deals so heavily with depression and trauma. If you are somebody who has been through any type of abuse, definitely be very wary of reading this book because I did not expect it to be so heavy and so intense. But it definitely was. I definitely cried a lot while reading this, especially because I watched the movie right after, so it was just tears fast. We accept the love we think we deserve. You see things and you understand. You're a wallflower. I didn't think anyone noticed me. It's definitely one of those books where you will have to read between the lines at a lot of the things that Charlie says because otherwise you might miss a lot. But it's a heartwarming story because it is very, very painful. But there are certain elements that you can very easily find yourself relating to, like making new friends or being the outcast or having all the people you love so dearly being separated from you or leaving you. This book was just such an emotional roller coaster for me. Like, I might even get emotional talking about it right now. So, let me just calm down a little bit but I really really loved this book and it was a 5 out of 5 star read from the moment I started reading it because it was just such an important story. That's all I'm going to leave it at. It's such an important story. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Wife which is a thriller novel that follows a main character whose husband gets accused of committing a crime that has to do with one of his female interns. Um, this crime that he gets accused of committing ends up snowballing into a case where he is being investigated and because of the investigation his wife takes it into her own hands to do her own investigation and um the book how do i explain it without giving any spoilers this book is a roller coaster from the start because we find out a lot of things about the wife's past and what she has been through and um, I'm trying really hard not to give spoilers while explaining this book but honestly the plot twists in this book were just wow like wow if you um, if you read this book please be wary because there are a lot of themes of abuse and assault and kidnapping and things like that I will heavily warn on that but the plot twists in this book are honestly so shattering like, I don't even know how to put it into words but oh my goodness this might be one of the best I don't want to say best thrillers I've read this year but it was really really good I was really nervous reading it because I had just gone through reading all these bad thriller books so maybe that's what eventually bumped it up to a five star read but it was definitely a really good one but of course I can't talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anyone so we're going to move on to the next book. The next book on this list is All Boys Aren't Blue which is a memoir that follows our author through childhood, their teenage years, and then eventually college where they join a fraternity and discover a lot of things about their identity. This book I really really enjoyed because even though it is a memoir, which a lot of them tend to be very focused on the adult style writing, it was more focused on the YA style writing and I felt like that was very nice. It would be very easy for YA readers to read this and I know that when I read a lot of YA, like when I was younger and I was reading a lot of YA, I never ever thought to read memoirs and I feel like this is one that would definitely be great, especially for queer um, teenagers or queer young adults to read. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that because I thought the story was very, very impactful, learning about our author and their life and all the things that they have been through with their family and themselves and their friendships. It was just very heartwarming and it did also break my heart a lot. And it also talks a lot about gender identity and that's definitely something that I haven't read a lot of. Like I have said a few times I haven't read many memoirs, so that's definitely the reason. But this was just very good. Highly recommend the audiobook as well because I thought it was really well done. The next book is The Hunger Games which follows our main character Katniss Everdeen who ends up becoming a tribute for this very dangerous game called The Hunger Games. <laughs> I always wondered why The Hunger Games was called The Hunger Games and I still don't understand. Are they like hungry for entertainment? Because 
this book, this book wow. wow i was afraid reading this book because um it's very realistic honestly it's very realistic and i hate to say that but it's very realistic the hunger games just follows these teenagers who are having to sign themselves up into this giant pot that randomly picks people from different districts who have to fight to the death and um a lot of them sign up because their families and their districts will get money from the sign ups and they sign up to support their families this book was just so hard to talk about so hard to um, articulate Suzanne Collins is definitely a genius I feel like this author really predicted the entire universe and it scares me it scares me that I read this in 2020 because I was so afraid for my life my existence I was over here being like what's my capital audition video gonna be am I going to be what district will I be from I even looked up the district map of the United States and was like okay which district am I representing please don't be capital please don't associate me with those people who look like literal clowns no offense to clowns that would be offensive to clowns to say that people from capital look like clowns but um the commentary the social commentary in this book was just wow the idea that people love to see other people suffer as a form of entertainment I don't know about you but that sounds awfully realistic to me we are now at the final book my mask is crusty. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, it's dry. It's it's ready to be rinsed off. So it's a great thing that we're at the final book. And the final book is Girls of Paper and Fire. Lots to say, lots to think about, lots to feel. This book was absolutely spectacular. The premise of this book is that each year eight girls are chosen to basically serve the king and our main character even though she is part of the lowest caste system the paper caste she has these beautiful golden eyes that in entrance what's the word i'm thinking of that basically interest and intrigue the king and so she gets picked as one of the girls and she becomes um a paper girl and um, a lot happens because these girls are literally there to serve the king. And when I say serve the king, I mean serve the king. And this book just talks about so many important topics. So, so, so many important topics. Thinking about it just makes me feel heavy in my heart because she really struggled a lot with her identity and with her crush and romance towards another girl in the book and um our love interest in this book talented brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular never the same legend 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 i am struggling so hard to talk about this book but it's phenomenal it's amazing please read it um just kidding the themes in this book are just very 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 important i really really enjoyed the romance the only issue I had with the book was kind of like the ending the ending I just didn't understand and I felt like the ending should have just there was no need for the ending to be like that because I don't know maybe when I read the second book I'll see but I'm very confused as to why this is a series because it definitely felt like it was over at the end but then something happened that was like oh now we gotta go to the next book but I will be reading the next book because this was just phenomenal and I really hope the next book is also really good but yes my only qualms with it was that I just felt like the ending was <laughs> I don't know about that I Mm -hmm. do we need that we don't know but it still deserves a five out of five star rating and it's definitely going to be on the list for my favorite fantasy books that i have read this year and that's on period that's all the books that i have for my five star ratings and my five star books wrap ups again thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you guys so much for being here for my face mask um also thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video don't forget to use my code check out their books and get yourself a box i will see you guys in the next video bye